Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, you may as well subscribe, like, and share us with your network. So we've all had life happen. We have had ups and downs. We have good things and bad things. We've had trials and tribulations, but somehow we make it through. The question isn't so much about making it through, but what's the residue that you make it through with? Today, I want to introduce you to my guest who's going to talk to us about that, her new book, and a whole bunch of other things. Y'all, please say hello to Dr. Cynthia Howard. Hey, Dr. Howard. Well, hello, Ricky. How are you, dear heart? Doing so well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I, I want to thank you for having me today. And I'm excited to be here. Me too. There's so much to talk about. So Dr. Howard, first of all, congratulations on your book that just recently came out. Yay! Exciting. Author, author. <laughs> that is exciting. And I know that it's it, like most books, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It's been a long time coming. There's a long story behind that, but it came really from my studies on my doctorate degree and mm -hmm. um, the last degree that I got in the field that I got it in. So yes, it was a long time coming, but it's here. It's Yay. Here. Tell us the name of your book, Dr. Howard. The name of my book is When Your Heart Hurts. And mm -hmm. then the subtitle or the theme behind it is dealing, healing from life's wounds. And that's what we're going to talk about. You set it up perfectly. So, Dr. Howard, you said that you this book came along as you were doing your doctoral thesis. What's your what's your doctorate in? So, my doctorate is in Christian counseling. Okay. And um, I I worked at a corporation for many many years. Um, retired from there really, and uh, got all my degrees up to my MBA. And I wanted to work on my doctorate's degree before I left the corporation. However, they only they only kind of Took, you had to take studies from the field that you're in. And I was an HR manager at the time, but I didn't want my doctorates to be in human resources. So it's a long story, but I decided to do it in Christian counseling. And it has been such a blessing. I know it has. And I'm sure the book is going to be an absolute blessing to everybody that reads it. So Dr. Howard, you're, the book is called When Your Heart Hurts. And we have all gone through things that have caused our heart to hurt. What is it about this book that's going to help any of us who are dealing with things that have hurt us in our life? Well, this book really dives into really what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we go around, we wear masks, um, there's surface things that's going on. We wear a Band-Aid to cover up all of the hurts, the wounds, the pains, unspoken things that we don't want to talk about, we don't want to discuss. In this book, I help you and give you tools and skill sets on how to deal with those hurts and pains. Because if you've never been hurt, if you've never had a traumatic experience, I say, keep living. Right. You, <laughs> you, you will. You it's will. Dumb. And and so, you know, when you talk about heart hurts and pains, it's anything from a tragedy to a traumatic experience that maybe helped happened in your childhood. Um, it could be a bad um, nature, natural disaster, like the tsunamis and everything that's going on in the world today, molestation, rape. There's a plethora of things that hurt us in some way or fashion. But how do we deal with it spiritually as well as naturally? That is so good, you know, because so many of us have gone through things that I like you, you referred to the, the growing up in childhood, because a lot of our deep hurts started there. And then we carried them over into our adulthood, where we compounded it with all the other stuff that adulting brings with it, you know, yes. and that 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 is so tough. And I like what you said, you know, we wear masks every day and and then the Band-Aid to cover up the thing. And that is so true. <laughs> and okay. we and, and we really we really believe that the wound has healed. Right? But things surface in life and you realize maybe that anger is still there. 
maybe that bitterness is still there. Maybe yeah. that abandonment issue or rejection, whatever the issue is, it's still there because something comes up. And if it comes up and it bubbles up, guess what, Ricky? It means that you have not dealt with it. You have not delved down to the root cause. And people, in order to heal, you have to delve down to that root cause. But we don't want to deal with the root cause, Dr. Howard. It hurts. <laughs> it's sad. It's scary. And no one's going to understand what I'm going through. What do you say to that? Well, what I said to it through the book is I use myself as an example. Mm. So I had to apply all of these hurts that I've gone through in my life, traumatic experience that I've had in my life, all of those things I had to apply to myself. And in this book, you'll see one of the chapters I talk about the journaling that I did to do it, you know, to address it and things like that. I had to ask the Lord, really, what's in my heart, Lord? And, you know, in the Lord, you know, in journaling, it's a back and forth. It's a meditation. It's a spending quality time. But it's really writing down those thoughts that um, spontaneous come to your mind and just document it. And, and once you start doing that, it just flows, flows, flows. So when I asked the question about rejection and determined that I had rejection in my heart, but before I got there, um, I, the Lord said, Cynthia, what's in your heart? And I said, well, I got the love of Jesus in my heart. <laughs> I got joy in my heart. Right. I'm all of that in a bag of chips. By the time the Lord got through with me, he said, no, you, you may have some dust. of that in your heart, but them chips are crushed up right now. And <laughs> there's some right. things that you haven't dealt with. So, that is so, good. So, so that's what I looked at. And then in delving into the heart, so there's like, um, one of the courses that I train on is the seven mountains of freedom, which deals with the seven prayers that heal the heart. And that goes into, you know, breaking those generational curses that may have been in your life that deals with um, severing those ungodly soul ties, the Ooh. denouncing those inner vows that we have made. And I journaled about this for me and a lot of it I put in the book. So I'm not telling you, but I'm showing you how you can do it. And the main focus is you have to want to do the work. You oh. have to want to be healed. Yeah. And a lot of people, and then when you do all of these steps, then you walk in the freedom of Christ and the, and the freedom of relationships and his Holy Spirit and doing what you are supposed to be doing in the earth. What is your purpose for being here? Oh my gosh, all of that right there. If y'all need to send an offering, don't worry, I'll get you the information, no <laughs> worries. Because because that, that's really good stuff. Uh, the biggest thing that, that stuck out to me is you have to want to be healed. Yes. A lot of us times, and, and I'm sure you've seen it in, in your doctoral studies and just in your counseling and mentoring, everything that you do. Some people think they really are okay. And to say that I want, I need to want to be healed because in our mind, it says, who wouldn't want to be okay? Yeah. You know? Who wouldn't want to be okay. But when things happen in our lives, Ricky, um, sometimes it stops us in our tracks. Well, and it, and, and it puts you in a place where you have to think mm -hmm. I, I can share a story with you of really how I came to write the book, because towards the end of my career at the corporation I worked at, um, I got sick unto death mm -hmm. and I ended up at work in a, in a, in an all hands meeting, wasn't feeling well, went home, went to bed. One thing followed another. Next thing you know, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't talk. My husband was concerned. They rushed me to the hospital. Bottom line, I had bacteria meningitis. I had eaten something. They couldn't tell me what it was that I had eaten. And I mean, it just almost wiped me out. People were dying around me in the hospital and I went into a coma and I was in a coma for three days on the third day. Now, come on that's now. Another, that's another <laughs> offering right that's there. That's a whole nother on thing. On the third day, he woke yeah. me up. But, and, and, and he dealt with me for like three or four weeks when I had to stay in the hospital. And he gave me Cynthia Howard Consultant. He sent me to Habeka, the, the scripture that talks about right division and make it plain. And all of those things that I had to apply in school, he started applying it to me in my life. So all of the scriptures, uh, Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work all together. Things. So now and I'm preaching that to everybody. Yes, you I are. Know, <laughs> but I'm laying in the hospital bed saying, yo, 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 Lord, what happened? <laughs> 
this can't be working for my good. But it right. was, Vicky. It yeah. was. And it always is. Yeah. And that's not one thing we don't remember, especially those of us in the household of faith. We sometimes in our own circumstances, we forget that all things work together for good to those who love God. And sometimes when we're going through things, and me included, you know, I, the thing that you said, Earl, I like it. You said, I'm not telling you what I've learned. I'm telling you what I know, you yes. know, and I think if more people were able to tell what they know, instead of hiding it, we're back to our masks and band-aids, more people would be healed because you'll see one, that it's possible. And two, that everybody has junk that they deal with. Yes. You know? Everybody's got junk. If you're human, you're going to be dealing with some you're stuff. You're dealing with it. And no matter how well you hide it, no matter how good you make it look, <laughs> you got <laughs> stuff going on just like everybody else. Um, I know uh, you hear a lot of people say things like hurting people hurt people. Yes. How true is that in your from what you've studied? Well, it's very true. Um, in my in my business, Cynthia Howard Consulting, I do a lot of consulting, coaching, mentoring, and counseling. And mostly in the counseling arena, you know, I have people that come in. I have young, young men, 16, 17 year old that come in, anger management. I've dealt with a plethora because I was in HR. I do HR consulting. I've traveled all over for the company and so forth and so on. But they come in thinking one thing. And once we go through the counseling and the exercises and looking at the triggers that cause them to act the way they act, they come out a different way. So it's all about communication and finding someone that you can trust. So in my business, you know, I always tell people I'm Dr. Cynthia Howard. I work with people who are tired of feeling unsafe, mistreated, and judged in their environment. And who desires a safe place to share their okay. feelings openly, conquering everything negative. The key thing is confidentiality and that trust. Yeah, because you know, so many of us have people in our lives, but very few of those people know the real us because like you said, we feel unsafe. Yeah. I, I, I can't trust you with my emotions. But then too, Dr. Howard, I find that depending on who you are, where you are in life, your age, whatever, the people, some people in your life may not be able to handle you being really you, the right. hurt of you, the, the true testimony of you, you know, how do you go about finding that person or those people who can handle it and not look at you like you have lost your mind? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so I give out to others. That means that I need a covering as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that leads back to relationships are so key and beneficial. So maintaining and nurturing relationships is key. I don't care what walk of life you're in. And let's just think about it. To build a, a, a relationship, what do you do? You spend time with a person. If it's with a boyfriend, if it's with your husband, if it's with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, that I may know you in the power of your resurrection. What do I have to do? I have to spend time with that person. I have to read the scriptures. I have to have prayer. I have to maybe fast. There are certain things that I know that I need to do to spiritually get in alignment with where I want to be. And it's with on your job, with your supervisor, in your family, with your uh, relatives, be it your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunts and your uncles, someone that you have a disconnect with, you have to do that. And I have done that through my prayer partners. Mm -hmm. um, I have a group of prayer partners, there's six of us now. We have been praying every weekday morning at 530 for 40 years. Oh, my. did you hear what I said? You said 40 years. 40 years. And we've been saying that is over 30 years, but we're realizing that these years are adding up. And we started at an early age, a That's young, awesome. a young lady, um, mother in the church that was dear to us, told me and my cousin, you need to have a prayer partner. You need mm -hmm. to have someone that you, the bottom line though, Ricky, is that the prayer partners and ours, it has transformed our lives. Prayer changes things 
and what you do. So we have, we pray for others. We get prayer requests constantly all day long, especially in this time in which we're living. And we support each other. I have prayer partners on the line. I'm from HR. I have my own business. Another one is an entrepreneur. She, she does her jewelry design um, and is a minister. Another one, my cousin lost her husband. Now she found herself being first lady and pastor of the church that he had started. Um, one of them retired from a hospital here in the Connecticut area and, and, and operating room. We're all from different walks of life. Sure. But we have one constant theme, which is prayer. We have become so vulnerable with each other. And our prayer after we pray leads into counseling sessions for ourselves. We <laughs> yeah. find release. We find release on the phone. So we be crying. We be laughing. Yeah. We be snapping, We be doing the ugly. <laughs> we be giving our opinions and helping each other. Well, let me tell you, this happened to me. And this yeah. is how I dealt with it. Yeah. I mean, that is so good. And so many people are looking for those kinds of relationships. But people nowadays, you know, in the microwave society in which we live, if I can't get deep with you in 36, 72 hours, I guess it just doesn't work. You know, we're missing the art of yeah, cultivating but... friendships. Yeah, you're right. We are missing the art of it. And that, that talks to the soft skills. Mm. You know, we're in a technology based age and everything is look at us on Zoom and making yeah. sure everything is right and things like that. Um, and we're talking one on one, but we're not talking face to face. You know, I can't personally touch you and say, girl, how you doing? And things like that. Um, those soft skills are dying out. And it's really scary because yeah. you're going to need them. You're going to need the Lord at some point, the way that this world is going. Ooh. You're going to need all of that. So you have to, you have to maintain it. It's a two-way street. So you have to nurture it. You have to maintain it and you have to diagnose it to mm. say, okay, is this person here for a reason, for a season, or just to aggravate me? You, know, <laughs> you have to determine what that is. I know that's right. A reason, <laughs> a season, or to aggravate me. Right. Mm. You know, or, yeah. you know, it could be a reason or season or lifetime. Yeah. I have lifetime right. friends that we have been, we don't talk every day, but when we do talk, Ricky, it's like we just pick up where we, pick left, it up where off. we left off. I and know, there's I have no problems. animosity or anything. And it's just as good today as it was 10 years ago when we started that random conversation. I, exactly. I just think that is so good. You know, I have a thing on my desk and it says relationships are important, nurture good ones. And I tell people, don't just take what drops in your lap. Be as picky about your friends as you are about your outfit. <laughs> I love that. I love it. But think about it. We spend more time spinning around in our closet than we do building and nurturing good relationships. We I, sure I just do. think that that's so sad, but so good. Dr. Howard, there's like a thousand things that we can yet talk about, but I'm not going to take up all the time. So if someone wanted to work with you or continue this conversation, where can they reach you? Well, they can quickly reach me on my website, which is www chconsultme.com. Oh. And on my website is all of the information and details about who I am, what I do, and why I do what I do. And, and, and the information is there, the phone number to call me. I have a 15-minute um, free consultation call that I do on a daily basis just to listen to you, you know, and I take pride in just doing that. You know that there's a couple of types of listening are you listening to hear what a person is saying or are you listening to reply there you go and most of us listen to reply yes we tell do. the truth you know that yes, we do. and don't worry y'all if you did not get dr howard's information it's all going to be in the description below and don't forget her book is on amazon i gotta order mine too anyhow um one of the last things i wanted to talk to you about really quickly is that you know you're saying cultivating all these friendships and making sure to go deep with other people how important is it to get deep and serious with yourself Oh, it is so important. Matter of fact, that's the key, mm -hmm. um, really, because you can point your finger at anybody. And if I point my finger at you now, 
what's pointing back to me. Right. That thumb is pointing back to me. So it's always important to examine yourself and consider your ways, your attitude. There's another training course that I do called the dance system of Ooh. church administration, but it's not just for church administration. It can be used for leaders and professionals, preachers, teachers, whatever you're doing in life. Um, and that means that you have to look at yourself. The dance is an acronym. The D stands for deliverance. The A stands for attitude. The N stands for the nature of man, understanding who man is and who you're dealing with. The C is for change and the E is for elevation. So when you ask that question, my first thing is, what is your attitude? How Ooh. do people see you? Uh, are you embracing change or are you kicking against the pricks and you don't want to change? It, does your attitude smell good or does your attitude stink? And we deal with all of that. So, and there's a scripture in the Bible. I cannot remember the exact um, book and verse right now, but it says, let a man examine himself. Mm -hmm. And so in other words, we are to look at ourselves before we look at others. We are to look at ourselves before we judge others. And it's so easy for us to judge because of the environment that we find ourselves in. So looking inwardly and deeply is so important. And most people are hurting because they're not doing that. That's and true. so a lot oh of people gosh. now with the pandemic and going on and that COVID still lingering around and doing its thing, people having to beat to themselves, depression, anxiety, isolation is bringing out the fact they've had to spend time with themselves and maybe you don't like what you see. Right. Get your life together is all I'm saying. Dr. Howard, there's so much information here and so much good stuff. And like I said, if you didn't get her information, it's in the description below. Make sure you get her book. And again, it's called When Your Heart Hurts. I love that so much. And don't forget, subscribe, like, and share our content as well. Dr. Howard, my friend, before I let you go, we got to play a game. <laughs> okay. So this game is called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. It's that simple. Are you uh, ready okay. to play? I'm ready to play. Let's do this. McDonald's or Burger King? Can I say neither? <laughs> yes, ma'am, you can't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, my preference. Would, oh, go ahead. Okay. My preference would be McDonald's, but now I stay away from processed foods. Good for you. It'll apparently you'll live longer. All right. <laughs> Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Slow down. Good answer. I'm very proud of you. Going to the movies or movies at home? I like going to the movies. It's the popcorn, isn't it? Yes. That's what it is. For and me. the goobers. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Make the call or send the text? Make the call. Mm. East Coast or West Coast? I guess I have to say East Coast. Yeah, I would guess so. Shopping online or in the store? In the store, but I'm trying to get into that online shopping. I, I like to see it, touch it, and like it, and bring it home. That's right. And then if I had it, take it back. Oh, well. <laughs> dressing up <laughs> or dressing down? Dressing down. Okay. Fry it or grill it? Grill it. Really? I don't know why I was so hoping you were somehow going to say fry it. It's just me. <laughs> And finally, Dr. Howard, what would you tell your 13-year-old self now? Hmm, that's a good question. I would tell my 13-year-old self to not feel rejected, to fly, to soar into the things you want to do, to have confidence, to never undervalue yourself, value where you are in life, value what you bring to life, the products and services, anywhere that you go. I would tell them, I would tell my 13 year old self, don't be afraid. So mm -hmm. many times in my life, I have been afraid to do something because looking at how other people do it and I can't do it that way. So I would say, 
be yourself, lean and depend upon Jesus and watch what happens. Oh my gosh, all of that right there. See, I'm just going to call you again just so you can tell it to me again. <laughs> Dr. Howard, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You are so welcome and God bless you and your endeavors in this podcast, or maybe it's not really called a podcast, but just the opportunity to be with you on in social media. I appreciate it. Everybody, that's it for this time, but don't worry, we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Oh,